Hey everyone, Creepy here. So I'm not using the same mic as before because once again, I had a problem with it. I'll get it fixed soon, don't worry. Anyway, today we'll be talking about Spider-Man No Way Home. And if you don't know about spoilers, please click off. I was lucky enough to be able to watch this movie with my eyes completely blind. And I can tell you, it makes the experience so much better. Anyway, I'm forgetting the spoilers, so please, please leave. Anyway, the first thing I'm going to be talking about is the Daredevil cameo. I was not expecting this at all. And the fact that Daredevil is Peter Parker's lawyer. It's just so amazing and I love it so much. It was a really good detail that they didn't have to add and it just makes me so giddy. I just want to really quickly talk about the pacing of this movie. It has three acts like all movies and I think they were all paced really well. The Spider-Man vs. Strange battle was really well done. I like the idea of it going from the mirror dimension. I thought that was done really well. Great fight overall. Now I'm going to do some complaints I had with the movie. So first off we have the lizard. Personally he wasn't the best. Obviously he was cut off screen. I didn't like that. Other than that, I thought he was fine throughout the movie, but that thing just wasn't too chill to me. That's just my own personal opinion though. Next up, we have Sandman. I don't think he was too well established in this movie. I love him in the Spider-Man 3, and it was one of the only good parts of that movie, unironically. Now, I just think they should have made his ambitions more clear, but I do like how him and Electro actually disagreed because he wants to go home to see his daughter. Makes sense. Electro wants to take over this new world because he sees it as new picking. If you are still here and don't want spoilers that are really big leave anyway toby and andrew are in this movie i was hoping so much that they would be in this movie like that's amazing like how oh, it's, it's, it's so good it's so good we all called it when we saw mj falling off the building in the trailer andrew saves her he was not able to save Gwen. it was one of the only good parts of the amazing spider-man 2 and here he was able to do it near the very end of the movie we get to see a classic suit that's awesome i love the fact that they get to do some cool callbacks to the original comics the death scene of Aunt May was done so well and how happy tried to save Spider-Man by like saying hey you gotta get out of here and like the fact that she just said great power comes great responsibility it hit man the three Spider-Man working together and stuff is just so amazing of course they have a bunch of references like Norman saying I'm a bit of a scientist myself or Peter Parker from the classic movie saying my back Green Goblin is amazing I'm sorry Green Goblin was just dealt so well in this movie I think he was dealt good in the uh, original movie and he was done so well here I love his character but I like how you can't really control it. it's great it's great now the end of the movie how they just like erase Peter Parker from basically ever existing from anyone's memory great that's just such a mature way of handling it and the way that he doesn't even try to become friends with MJ and Ned but he keeps this the uh, Lego Palpatine from the first movie. That's great. Anyway, the post credit scene we see Venom and he's like trying to get like a hold of all of this new stuff in this new world. And then he gets brought back in his world, except he leaves a small piece of the Venom symbiote. So we we're gonna see Venom in the MCU. I'm gonna be giving you guys my ranking of all the Spider-Man movies. Coming in number one, we have No Way Home. Coming in number two, we have Into the Spider-Verse. Coming in number three, I have Spider-Man 2. Coming in number four, we have Spider-Man, the original. Coming in number five, we have Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Coming in number six, we have Venom. Coming in number seven, we have Spider-Man Homecoming. Coming in number eight, we have Spider-Man Far From Home. Coming in number nine, we have The Amazing Spider-Man. Coming in number 10, we have Spider-Man 3. Coming in at number 11, we have The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Overall, I would give this movie a 9.5 out of 10. This is either the second best or best movie I saw this year. Either in front of or behind Godzilla vs. Kong, I have not yet decided because that movie is personally very significant to me. Anyway guys, that's really it for now. Creeper out. Socialism is when the government does stuff. And it's more socialism, the more stuff it does. And if it does a real lot of stuff, it's communism.